gentlemen, you're welcome to the Pan-African debate on your Pan-African channel, Africa Media. We're sorry for the late start. So today I have one main topic for you, ladies and gentlemen, what, that we're going to talk about on the studio. We're going to talk about the G20 summit, which just ended. It started on the 16th, and it started on the 15th, I beg your pardon, and ended on the 16th in Indonesia, Bali in particular, that is the town. So all the leaders, well leaders, took part in this event. Some were absent, we're going to talk about those who were absent today, and uh, Africa, or the continent that is represented by the African Union, was also present, and we're going to talk about some of their plea to uh, uh, the G summit. It, the, the chairperson of the African Union in the person of President Macky Sall of Senegal represented uh, the African Union and some other members. And one of his main plea to the members of the G20 was that they should take uh, Africa and some of the states as their permanent member. And owing to them, he explained to them the large portion of Africa, the number of people that in 2025, uh, Africa is going to have at least 2.5 billion people, which is a huge market for them. He gave them reasons why they should look more on Africa and trade with them as partners, not as colonies, and have more to bring on the table, giving them a chance to have a seat in the room. And so we also talk about the crisis between the world countries, what geopolitics is doing, which is a affecting the world at large. We should take note that before even the coming of COVID-19, we had crises between these main countries, but the coming of COVID-19 sparked a serious crisis as uh, United States of America during the period of President Donald Trump accused China of creating this virus and putting it out there and saying they have the cure, they were, are not saying it, accusing them of a lot of things. And so since then, China and, uh, China and America have been under high tension. And so this was also spoken about as their president, Xi Jinping, took part in this G20 uh, uh, summit, which took place in Indonesia. So today we're going to analyze the topic. We're going to watch videos on the event, what happened, who was present, and we'll come back to the studio to analyze with our panelists in here. So let me present to you my panel today, those who are with us in the studio, to give more light on this topic. We have uh, always present Sheikh Mohammed. Good afternoon to you. You're welcome to the program. Thank you very much for honoring our distinction. We have Barrister Achu Julius. Good afternoon to you. You're welcome to the program. Uh, good afternoon, my, uh, my co-panelists, and good afternoon, Africa. Thank you very much for honoring our invitation. We also have uh, Mr. Shunengwa. It's been a while. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. Good afternoon, Emanuela. Good afternoon to Mayor Achu and Sheikh. Good afternoon, Africa. I'm delighted once more to be here to analyze seven political facts about the world on Africa. I'm glad to be here once more. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us on this debate. So we're going to talk about how geopolitics is affecting the world, the economy, and also different countries. And we're going to talk about how it's affecting particularly the African continent. So let's start by watching. We're going to watch a series of videos, but let's watch this one, which talks about the summit which took place. We'll go right back after that. G20 leaders have resolved to isolate support from Bali. Russia increasingly isolated amid hopes from the rest of the world that Chinese President Xi Jinping will lean on Vladimir Carlos, Putin. Can we have the, video the host live of the here? summit, Indonesian no President Joko yeah, Widodo, told G20 leaders the world could not move on without a Russian withdrawal. Stop the war. I repeat, stop the war. A lot is at stake. War will only make people suffer. Global economic recovery will not happen unless the situation improves. That was quite extraordinary. That's and to uh, pressure uh, Russia into withdrawal from Ukraine. That's the solution here. In the end, the leader's declaration said most nations condemn the war. The leaders planted carbon-sucking mangroves to signal the need for action on climate change as they dug in over the need for the Ukraine war to end. Late in the day, Anthony Albanese held bilateral meetings with French President Emmanuel Macron and British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, as well as Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi. After the AUKUS submarine deal scuttled a French subcontract under Scott Morrison, it appears that France is in for more defence deals with Australia. 
I'm not going into the specifics of, uh, uh, of equipment and, and those issues, but France, of course, is an Indian Ocean power and a Pacific power. We spoke about uh, how we could have uh, an increased engagement and cooperation in defence and security matters. The PM also on Wednesday rejected a move reported by Iran to call in the Australian ambassador over comments Mr Albanese had made on human rights. We will stand up for human rights. We will stand up for uh, Australia's position consistent with our values. The week of summits continues with Anthony Albanese flying to Thailand for APEC. Very much for that video. We're going to watch another video, but let's first of all go around uh, the table. What actually what was the most people were expecting President Vladimir Putin to take part in this summit. We saw the French president, the United States president, those from Indonesia, the UK, and all the other members were present. He sent somebody to represent him, but most people expected that he should be there. And he also sent a message. We're going to watch the message in a minute, um, talking about the reasons for the war and calling on America actually telling particularly the countries in Europe under the European Union that they are the ones who actually started the war, particularly the US, as he called on them to respect the clauses that were signed in order for them not to enter Ukraine, but they kept on pushing, pushing, and they will not accept some other person to do that to them, but they can do that to some other person, and then Russia has taken it for too long, and they are not ready to continue. So, Sheikh, let's first of all talk about what is geopolitics uh, to the population. When we hear of geopolitics, some people might not understand, others do. It is a struggle over the control of a geographical entity with an international or global dimension that is just struggling for uh, geographical space, and particularly, it's always on political gain or to the advantage of the other one when it comes to politics. So that's why we're talking about it when it comes to the war, because you always have the world powers struggling to gain more and then there are others who are suffering. So, <laughs> Sheikh, let me begin with you. The crisis is taking another turn. It's affecting the economy. You have people cannot even do inter-trade anymore. People cannot move from one country to the other. It is affecting the livelihood of people. The war has come to just double what COVID-19 started, which has not been solved up to today. There are claims that it still exists, even though in some other countries there are people living on their, with their lives. And things are getting worse and worse. So this summit, they decided to hold it this time around in Indonesia, like a neutral ground for them to sit and talk about the way forward. Even though at the end, they did not still get the expected results because they were calling on end the war, but like it's, the war is not just going to end, end like that. And Vladimir Putin gave rules uh, uh, his own classes. If America does not back out, they are not going to stop. Uh, thank you very much, my brother. You see, I don't even know where to start because concerning the issue of Ukraine, it's just a destruction. Ukraine started from when the Berlin Wall came down, and certain promises were not made. But that is a different issue that you take us aside. Um, another thing also which I'd like the Africans and the world at large to know is what, how the world is structured. The problems of the world are not going to be solved by politicians, nor by religious leaders, given the way it is. Because when I say that, people might think I'm trying to... Uh... You see, um, the English language sometimes makes things very clear just by the way things are presented. The prefix poly in English stands for many. So polymer is a, 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 an algebraic term with many components. Uh, sorry, a, 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 a chemical pro, a sub terms with many subcomponents. Um, polynomial, an algebraic term, many components. And polygon, so poly in general means many. Ticks in English. It's an insect which you can see in some animals, they, so it sucks blood. Mm -hmm. So in layman's terms, if you don't have to be a biologist to understand, you say that ticks are blood suckers. So when you say politics, you mean many blood suckers. Now, now just, just from there, you don't have to go further. You understand that they, they are not going to be the solution of things in the world. Now, uh, we also have to understand that even the so-called politicians are the last people who have any say in the matter. The world, how is it structured? I will forget the, the, I will forget the real top because most people have not been prepared to understand who is the, the real top making decisions. Let, let's come down to things which they know. 
Uh, you have a certain order called the Order of the Black Sun, who are the ones who initiated the Second World War, whose aim was nothing to do with what was said written in history. You have uh, the Order of Black Nobility, which is mostly in Northern Europe. They are the ones who masterminded the shooting down of 40 satellites out of 49 launched by Elon Musk recently. You have the Order of the Red Dragon. You have the Order of Illuminati, and there are two different branches of them. You have the White Dragon in Japan. You have the Vatican. Then this is one level. Now, below now, you have some things like the Masonic Order, Skull and Bones, the Russian Christians, and the uh, uh, Round Table, Bilderberg, Conference on Foreign Relations. That's one level. Below that now, you have the various intelligence organizations, like MI5, MI6. We have not yet reached where the presidents are. So you can understand that when something happens in the world, the presidents have no say in the matter. So uh, this, what they're happening in Indonesia, is just, just kind of a show. Now, when it comes to uh, saying that, oh, the, the media is going to talk, everything is going to talk, people will act, there will be protests, and so on, what, what is all of that? Now, if you consider the operation done by the American CIA from the 70s called Operation Mockingbird, where every major media was infiltrated with CIA agents because they had done research and they found out something about the human psyche. When a human being sees the same source of information, the same information from eight different sources, on average, he considers that to be the truth. That fact is used in politics. That fact is used in education. That fact is used even in publicity in order to make people to get acquainted to certain things. And by using this tool, they have made the world population to believe what truth they want and to take what factual history they want, even though the thing is all false. Now, that is what causes the revolt, the this, and so on and so forth. Not, and, and on top of that, they can accelerate things by putting chemicals in what people drink, in what they rub on their bodies. They spray some as chemtrails in the air for everyone to see, with a plane flying, flying with a white truck going behind. So, when it comes to uh, asking now what solution can they, you know, I say they, were just, they are just going to make a lot of noise but what we must understand is where the world is was yesterday where the world is today and where we are likely going and that does not depend neither on the politicians nor even on this society because humanity is waking up and many of the bad guys who used to pin down in order to create enslaving economic and financial systems are falling that is why you can find many countries like Russia creating a ruble backed by gold, something which Gaddafi tried and was killed. Saddam Hussein only tried to sell petroleum for euros instead of dollars and was killed. You had John Bagofuli, uh, Kurunziza, uh, Ahmad Bakayoko, Zelami of Swaziland, as well as the Haiti president, just because they were against the COVID narrative. COVID, incidentally, is a pandemic. I think we've already talked about that here somewhere. Now, because they were against it, they went against the they were killed. So when people get together, I think Africans should understand that the situation in the past where we were physical, financial, economic, psychological, academic, spiritual slaves is passing. And it is important for people now to take their own power. In other words, the solution is not going to come from politicians. I've just explained that. People should stand up and realize they are sovereign beings. And they should stop waiting for some benevolent politician, be it a benevolent father, as this is the image we have, or a benevolent leader, to come and solve their problems. Nor should they wait for someone to come from the sky, like some people are waiting for the return of Jesus, who will come and solve all their problems. That, incidentally, the elite tried to use that to control the world population by bringing in Visario, who claimed to be Jesus who came back in Siberia. And who put an end to that project? Vladimir Putin. We should also realize that technology has given certain possibilities in the world which did not exist before. Many of the leaders you are seeing are not the leaders. It is technology. They are using avatars. To give you an example, recently we heard of a, a monarch who died in Europe. If things were to be done with real immediacy, that particular ceremony should have taken place in 2019. What I'm saying is that what we have been seeing from 2019 until recently was technology display. Now, that is very rampant.
all over the world. Ask yourself, we had a great person here, a great cardinal, and some people thought this person would make a good uh, leader, and they gave him political ambitions. I'm sure you're aware about it. He himself, from the answers I saw him give on the media, he was not, it had no political ambitions. But why do you think that when he gave up the ghost, somebody went to all the trouble to make sure that it was filmed and live worldwide? Because the technology of today makes it possible that if they hadn't done that, it would have been possible to have him with us even though he is gone. That situation is going out in the world all over. Why do you think the leader of the uh, most powerful nation has, up to date, fallen from the steps of a plane three times? That is a very loud message he's giving that, look, I'm an actor, I'm a Hollywood stuntman. You cannot have an 80-something-year-old person fall down the steps right to the tarmac and not be carried to hospital with broken bones. I also saw him go uh, on a bicycle ride, reach the journalist, and then fall. In another situation, he was reading a teleprompter, reached a statement where they said, repeat the line. He first said, repeat the line, and then acted out the place to show the people he is an actor. Why do people refuse to think? We're having such a situation in the world. It has its advantages. Because under the situation of avatars, and I can later on already explain what an avatar and how that technology functions, the dictatorial situation disappears because things are controlled by a group, no longer one person. They're just using somebody's image. But it is necessarily a group which has to work from behind. So you have team spirit being manifested. Secondly, the patriarchal paradigm it will be destroyed. Because you understand, in many of those cases, those who till pull the strings from behind, sometimes are the spouses of those people. People do not understand that we have got, we've got the patriarchal system on planet Earth. There are planets where you have the matriarchal system working. I can give them names. Now, we are on the verge of a new kind of relationship and life on Earth. People are totally blind to that. And they are out on small, small issues of the non So, asking me, Oh, the geopolitical situation, I said, no, there is no geopolitical anything. It's all theater. And even the, the issue of Ukraine, the real reason why they're fighting in Ukraine and the reason why they fought in Iraq and so on has nothing to do with what you saw in the press. We're going to get to that later on. <coughs> Thank you very much for those analysis. It's, it's like a global analysis, not even what is happening in the G20. Uh, Barista, I'll come back to you, Sheikh. Barista, let's talk about the, the G20 summit. Do you think this summit actually has its place at this particular time, given everything that is happening? Probably it was high time that it sat on the table, and is it the time? Because people are expecting a solution out of this, which is seemingly a little bit far. Uh, I don't think people are expecting any solution because uh, after listening to the Sheikh, I seem to put two and two together to give me five, not four. Uh, <laughs> I understand that uh, the G20 is supposed to be the economic and financial wing of the G7. Uh, Africa was just invited to attend when not, when not, when not me permanent members, yes. no non-permanent members, like Spain, which is like a non-permanent member, oh, but always attending meetings, but not a member, full member. Uh, the only African country that participates is South Africa. And I've noticed that since the blacks took over South Africa, South Africa is more alienated to Africa than ever before, mm -hmm. because the black guys who are ruling there don't like us. Let me put it that way. Let me put it straight. So that summit is meant to stabilize policies coming from the political wing, which is the G7, in such a way that it will infiltrate all the other countries. Mm -hmm. I don't see how G20 decisions will affect me in Cameroon. Let me put it that way. I don't see it unless it will act in favor of the G7. Technically, it was G8 before Russia was kicked out because of Crimea, the war in Crimea. But I see this, the, the West struggling to protect itself. And by in make, making sure that policies that are implemented at the macro level, because you see, they deal macro, so that you, the man on the street, you don't know, understand what's going on. What well, policies that are going to play at the macro level should favor them. Why can you explain that America is the biggest debtor in the world? 
but it's the most powerful economy. Yeah, in the gift for the gold, yes. loans, the, the, the things. Yes, they're the biggest debtor, but at the same time, the most credible economy. Yeah. Why don't they allow all economies to be like that? All of us are in debt, big debt, but they kept, they, with the economy being buoyant. So you see, it is much more of the West protecting itself in a changing world. I say the world is changing because, changing because, changing because don't forget that everything started in Africa. And at one point in time, some 8,000, 6,000 years ago, Africa was pushed out and some other type of civilization brought in and forced onto us, which we, are, which we are now living with it. But the reawakening is coming in such a way that we Africans have come to realize that we are not on the docks. These guys tend to portray us. We are much, much more than that. And in our seeking for that, which we think we believe we, we are in, they too are fighting for us to stay down. So uh, the way I see it, if we, we Africans don't come together to make sure that we, we at least we float, we stay atop our above water level, we are going to be in trouble. Because I don't believe in South Africa any longer, since the black guys took over. And South Africa will never represent you and me. You know, it's good. The African Union president was there to make a speech. But on what impact? impact? If we in Africa ourselves cannot even have a G something or a A something to unite all of us, because if you go to the African Union, I'm, I can bet you nothing, can, nothing comes out of there. It's just a toothless good luck, which is being co sponsored by countries who are not in Africa. How can you imagine that? What will you say? African Union is co sponsored by some countries who are not in Africa. And you think Africa Union can sit and talk against them? It's not possible. They made us believe that the world is ruled by money. By economic strength, economic financial strength, not even military strength. And the economy, whether they like it or not, is in Africa. They know that the world knows now that everything is centered in Africa. And if we don't push Africa down, we will come up and they will be down, and that will be very, very, very unstable. The instability in their own, their own era will be terrible. Just look at what's going on in the US. The black Americans are getting up from slumber. And they are busy taking up the economy. It's just a matter of time. If they don't put them down. We are of this color. Whether we like it or not, we are the chosen people. God came to us first. And that God came to us first, we'll go back. We'll take our legacy. And it's just a matter of time. Because G7, G5, I hear there are so many Gs. Well, Africa is not even involved. But it doesn't matter to you and me. We'll get there one day. We'll beat them to it. Let me read to you what um, the African Union president, let, we're going to, let's focus on what he said, because he, he was going on our behalf, in quotes, okay. Let me say what President Marquis Sao is a representative of the African Union. He was invited there as a guest, you earlier heard, he said, we are not a member, we don't have a seat there. So one of the plea, he asked for a seat there, and he gave some of the points. He said, Africa remains an essential partner on an international scene. It is the eighth economy power by GDP owned by more than 60% of uh, arable land with a population estimated of nearly 2.5 billion people between 2025 to 2020, uh, 2050, underlining the activities that Africa is going, is going to be a very good market and that uh, when it comes to food security and energy, Africa can even help them. But do you think that speech is going to mean anything to them? And was he on point asking for a seat at this time at the G summit? G20, sir. Yes, uh, Emanuela, I want to appreciate Makisa for that audacity, for the audacity to be able to speak out to the axle of evil. Because the G7 is the axle of evil. The G20 is the axle of evil. And uh, if the African Union president, chairperson, has that audacity to speak to them in the face, it means that, as Mr. Atu said, time will tell. You know the African Union is a puppet. I call them the weapon of mass destruction against the African people because they cannot, they, they, can't, they can't do anything for the interest of the African man. 70% of their budget is being financed by the European Union and United Nations. 
So it means that the dance to their tune, because as we put it, he who pays the piper, they taste the tune. Mm -hmm. So most of these things, I even want to believe, I really wonder, but I just pray it came from him, that it was not a scheme, just as uh, Sheikh was saying, that it's a drama, maybe they wrote the speech and gave him to come and read. Let me just strongly believe that it came from him, Makisa. And, if it's and he believes that it can work. <laughs> yes, I just want to believe that it came from him. Because he who pays the paper dictates the tune. They mm -hmm. wrote a piece of paper and gave him to read. So that the world should see and that think that trying. democracy. Yeah. And think that there is balance of power. Mm. That there is democracy. Whereas we understand all the tactics. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the G20 being the world's biggest economic forum. Mm -hmm. Means that there is economic interest. Yeah, definitely. Voila. And the, considering that if you strengthen Africa, you are going to weaken the European Union. You are going to weaken the G20. So they are just using us as a bet. As a matter of fact, saying that we are the eighth, econ Africa is the eighth economy in terms of GT GDP is a blatant lie. If we do proper analysis and evaluation, Africa is supposed to be number one. But we know what we are going through. Okay, take for instance, why is Africa not part of the G20? G20 is made up of 19 nations plus the European Union. And when we say plus the European Union, we are talking about other 10 or 15 countries. Mm -hmm. 27 countries that are under the European Union. That, if you measure their economy, they are lesser than that of Africa, geopolitically. When we bring Africa together and they say it is eight in terms of GDP, mm -hmm. is that not enough economic strength to be part of the G20? You see, they, they bring in South Africa and observer status. Because basically when you look, you see Europe, it is France, Italy, yeah, Germany, and uh, there are four. France, Italy, Germany, and UK, mm -hmm. who are permanent members, plus the European Union. You see, it is very strategic. And then look at Africa. They invite us as observers. Guests. <laughs> as guests. Mm. So you mean to tell me that the whole of the African economy is weaker than that of Italy? That's a member? The whole of the African economy is weaker than that of France? Yeah. A France that depends on French Africa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it is really scandalous. But we want to believe that uh, this, this issue of geopolitical strife that has been brought up by Vladimir Putin, because they are now operating in blocks. You have the Russo Chinese bloc, mm -hmm. you have the US European Union bloc. Mm -hmm. That is where the, the conflict is now. And it is enlightening other nations, enlightening other blocks. It is high time we create our own geopolitical block in Africa and fight like a block. Because what is really bringing Africa behind is like, is because we want to go in as individual nations. Yeah. Let us learn from the tactics of the European Union. They send in their big four. Then they go now and gather all the other nations and bring them in a block like the European Union. Let us be able to, to do cross-border diplomacy in Africa collaborate and go in as a block and we'll be able to have a voice in the G7 or in the G20 and will be considered in future and this is going to strengthen us to be able to fight if not if we go as individual nations it's not going to work this is very possible if all the African nations actually rectify the African free trade era because this was brought forward and not every African country is, is not all the African countries did not ratify did, because did not. of neo-colonialist and imperialist influence. They do not. This is something they that know that together. if we all ratify it, we will become economy, strong. Yeah. So they go behind to some of these puppet African nations and bribe them. If you ratify it, we will not give you again loans. Mm -hmm. They tell some presidents, if you ratify it, we are going to destabilize your country. Because these are things that happen in the background. Check analyze it to our understanding for those who are ears to hear. Mm -hmm. So they are the people weakening African institutions. They are weakening African government. As a matter of fact, yeah. I am one of those people who believe that democracy is not a solution to the African problem. 
Africa was meant to be kingdoms and our kingdoms were stronger before democracy ever came. Democracy came to destabilize and weaken Africa. And they are using it as a weapon to weaken Africa so that it can be able to penetrate us. Definitely, it's Africa is affecting the continent up to date. Uh, Sheikh, let's go back to, to the West. Let's look at this, the crisis, or what uh, uh, this Ukraine-Russia crisis has stirred up in the whole world. Was it that people were not expecting it, or they, know, they were not expecting it to get to this level, or what were they thinking at this particular moment? Because like every other country is complaining, for one thing or the other. Okay. This crisis has made people to know that no weed was even coming from this way. You know, some people just consume things they don't know. They know we import. They don't know where we import from. How petrol goes. How this goes. But like this crisis has probably it, it had its place. Should we say this? Like the crisis, boy, it's never good. But probably this crisis had its place because a lot of things have come up to the limelight. Uh, thank you very much, my brother. And as usual, I'm not going to stop, stay at the level of president because mm -hmm. you don't understand anything when you look at it that way. Uh, let us understand that the so-called COVID pandemic was actually something which had the aim of bringing in the new world order, that is having control of mankind as the first reason. The second reason, the lower, de decreasing the world population. The third reason, stifling human rise in consciousness, sometimes in certain circles like rise in vibration, because we are evolving. Mm -hmm. Edgar Mutua a South African shaman, spiritual leader, who died recently, revealed that his father told him that it was a deliberate policy by the West, whenever they vaccinated people in Africa, to inject them with substances which decreased their psychic abilities. Now, this is something which we had in Africa for a long time, and we've been indoctrinated and brainwashed to think it is primitive. If you give an example, when uh, Saddam Hussein was hiding and the Americans were looking for him. There were satellites, there were all those things. Do you know how they found Saddam Hussein? They used something they call it in their CIA remote viewing. Go to Google and type remote viewing and see what comes up. It's a technique which uses psychic methods to see at a distance something which is, and that is something which we had well developed here in Africa and we've been, we've been uh, take, talked out of it either by using religion or using some uh, education and so on. Uh, so, the COVID pandemic. You know, it's, it's actually negatively uh, like witchcraft or something. They, they don't want to right, call it that way. Right. <laughs> Meanwhile, it is something. Um, but fortunately, like my brother just said, Africa is made of the chosen people. We should understand Africans. It's all about you. And no one will decide for you. You have to wake up, take your power, and understand you're sovereign beings with a free will. And also know that. The original race in the world was the black race. We have proofs of uh, remnants of people from all over the world dating up to 100,000 years ago. And it proves that originally everywhere in the world, including China, India, America, South America, the original inhabitants were black. So because of lack of love amongst us and between us, that is the main reason. We do not, we don't have great concern for our brother. Because of that, we've been exterminated almost everywhere else, except Africa. But it's never too late. We can catch the train and go forward. Uh, the issue of Ukraine. Now, if we go to the level of intelligence services, we have had several incidents which have indicated that there was a plan a deliberate plan to lower the world population. Look at the Georgia Guidestones, which have been destroyed recently. It was clearly marked on it that the world population should be brought down to 500 million. I understand recently they've revised their figure to 1 billion, meaning they have to kill the rest. And any method is, is, uh, is suitable. This, the, the, the latest development on the COVID issue is that they were made from synthetically produced uh, snake and spider worm venom. That is why you find all the so-called new variants making people to collapse. Uh, it's a, that's a, I will someday if you make a program on that, I'll come and give the details. Now, uh, so to, to show how inside all this confusion there are people who are standing for humanity. Mm -hmm. There was a, a ship several months ago which left Europe carrying BMW cars, which was discovered with, by collaboration between the various intelligence services to contain a nuclear bomb. 
and this ship was uh, completely um, frozen by a satellite weapon, sending a microwave which melted the engine and was left standing stranded in the uh, Atlantic Ocean. The aim was to have it explode when America and accuse Russia in order to jumpstart a great global war. But the various intelligence services collaborated to make it come to an end. So the world is not the different camps you think. Even inside the Russian camp or inside the British camp, you have certain male elements of MI5, CI5, MI6, who are actually for humanity and who are going against the uh, cabal directed uh, uh, leaders of what they are, they are doing. Another is, instance was when a plane, and this time in a, in a radio program here, on the, on the, here in the capital, I mentioned the flight number where the plane had to refuel in Spain before landing in Ukraine. And the CIA, the elements who are good inside the CIA, sent information to FSB, the Russian Secret Service, warning them of what might happen if that thing reaches Ukraine. Now, it is, it is, uh, the, what is going on in Ukraine has nothing to do with Russian invasion or Russian expansionism. We know very well that Russia has no expansionist idea. They have never colonized people, they have never not enslaved people, they have not done all of those things. But what is happening in Russia is that the last stronghold of the Nazis was in Ukraine. That is why Putin said we have to denazify the, uh, the Ukraine. In Ukraine, you had biological weapon factories. The, the uh, laptop of the son of Biden, which was found recently, the exploitation of that has revealed lots of information. There were birds which were made in Ukraine, uh, migratory birds which were bred in order to carry certain viruses and spread all over the world. And that has been discovered and dismantled by Putin. I'm very happy that the vibration of the world is happening, is rising. Why? Because all the media, they even cut films, clips out of films talking about war and say that it is Putin who is the clean people in Ukraine in order to bring people to rise up against Russia. But when they voted recently in the United Nations, what happened? Even the majority of African countries were for Russia. That means that they are not following, they're no longer following what they see. They've started following their heart. I ask Africans, don't analyze news intellectually because the, the thing is too complex for your intellect. But use, use your spirit, which the Almighty gave you. It, that's the only thing in you, the only part of you which can never be deceived because that part is instructed and uh, taught by the Almighty directly. So don't try to understand the news. Feel in you whether this thing is true or not. Now, uh, uh, presently, under the present situation, there are many other factors which are coming, which the world is not being told. And we're acting as birds who've been in a cage for such a long time that even after the, the doors are wide open, nobody wants to leave. Look at Africans trying to acquire Western technology, when in the West they are soon going to abandon what is now currently going on. Paramahamsi Tiwari is an, a, 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 an Indian engineer who several years ago produced a, an over-unity generator. For those who are not technically minded, it means a generator which can produce electricity without any fuel. And he succeeded in making a patent. This is something which has been done by Nikola Tesla since 1902. And since 1902 up to now, they've systematically killed all the people who've tried to do that. Fortunately, Piramansi Tiwari manipulated and got the patent before people knew what he could do, and so they can't kill him anymore. And who are those who went to India to spread money around to prevent that project from rising off the ground? America, Saudi Arabia. Why? Because the petroleum industry, headed by Rockefeller, a member of the cabal, is worth $700 trillion. Africa, at the, at the verge of free energy, now things are really moving. Because there are other things which are happening which are not telling people. But some of the things which you can check yourself, I'll tell you. Check out TR3B. It's a triangular frame craft. It is manufactured by Northam Grodman Corporation in America. You can find videos of it. You can find uh, it in different hangars. It's a, a craft which functions on anti-gravity. You've been taught in school that you cannot neutralize gravity. That is false. You've been taught in school that matter is made of atoms, which are like small um, uh, 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 solid substances <laughs> spinning around. That is also false. If there's time, we'll get to know why they are keeping that falsehood. Because education, the media, and religion are three very good tools of brainwashing and conditioning in order to bring people down into slavery. So to understand what is happening in Ukraine, look recently at MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, they published that they found a way to make plants to glow, meaning that in a few years' time, 
Street lights will no longer exist. We just have certain trees which will produce light at night. But what they forgot to tell people is that a certain confederation of intergalactic vessels came here and activated certain arches in the world, one of which is in Ukraine, which prompted Putin to invade. And inside those arches, they found glowing plants, which was a kind of gift to humanity. Somebody is now going to patent it, like they did patent many other things after the crash in Roswell in 1947, when a vessel from outside the earth crashed. You can check out Roswell. There's a book called The Book of the Day After Roswell. The, uh, um, the Canadian Minister of Defense, Paul Heller, made an open statement, but people don't listen. The, uh, the, uh, um, uh, this, uh, the Russian president, the, um, what's the name again? The one who was, uh, uh, the, who was concurrent with when Putin could not be Gorbachev? president. No, 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 Gorbachev. Uh, Just continue, I'll tell you in a minute. Uh, okay, right. He openly said, that when the Russian leader takes over power, he's given a briefcase which has the names, uh, the codes for to launch all the nuclear weapons, Medvedev, Dmitry Medvedev. He has the code to launch all the, uh, to, to launch all the nuclear weapons, and he also has the names of all those who are living with them in Russia who are from outside the earth. And they deliberately keep this information back. Because obviously, if you know that people are coming from outside the earth, you will know that they did not burn diesel or petrol to get from two or five thousand light years away to get to come here. Now, uh, 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 so we are now on the verge of this contact. There are so many things I can't tell you. I can't, uh, you see, you have to go step by step. Because if I go too fast, you might begin to think that maybe shake the head is not. Very important. But there are certain things that are necessary for people to know. As you said, there are some of the things that people can check. Yes, and that yes. people, it's always good for people to type. When you see, when you give the things, type and check to make sure that you can read. Because you can give part and then they go and check and read more. Mm -hmm. And definitely will always have you back on the program where people want to really know what's happening in the world, why things are going the way they are going to, where, why things are going the way they are going, and why it's affecting people in the different areas. Where in Ukraine should not affect people in, in, in Cameroon, in Africa. People are asking why there's rising prices, why is the uh, change globally. Okay. People want to know uh, what now, is happening. Concerning the rising prices, the global elite, the, 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 a certain under, underground bunkers have been found. If you put uh, on Google search on the ground cities, you're going to find more than 104 of them. In some of them, we had enough provision to provide food for a large part of the world population for more than 50 years. And uh, what was the aim? Cause famine and food shortage worldwide. Then do what they did to the aborigines in Australia. If you want food, then you have to allow yourself, uh, uh, otherwise no food. So that way you get the whole population to, and then you have what that automatically is well controlled. Because once you put nano robots inside your bodies, so you can at the distance control and do what you make you do what they want. Now that was one of the one of the reasons they had to bring a food crisis. They even killed nearly 22 million chicken birds in America in order to help rarefy. And when Bill Gates started getting into farming, we saw had a food shortage. They managed to convince Indonesia, who had enough supply of palm oil. To, ex to cut exports. Indonesia and Malaysia export together 85% of palm oil in the world. Now, if you've read the book Silent Weapons and Quiet Wars, which is a book which was leaked from the Rothschild family, showing how you can destroy a nation just by manipulating economic tools. They can see how by shocking an economy on one particular product can lead to uh, economic fluctuation of pricing, which can bring down the entire economy. That's what they hoped to do with palm oil. But the good people fighting for humanity managed to calm down the situation, dump down the situation, and limit considerably the rate of inflation. The other inflation problem is that from 22nd February 2022, a decision was taken to change the world economy into a quantum financial system. Because we have a system now which is based on fiat currency. Meaning that America, like my brother said recently, how come America, which is the biggest debtor, is powerful? Because when they want money, they don't go to borrow from anybody. They just do something they call quantitative easing. That is just a very big word to mean that they get paper and, they print, and ink and a printing press and they print the thing out. Others are not allowed to do that. No, no, no. It's not, it's not only that. It, they, they, it, you see, how did they get to do it and get away with it? In the days of Nixon, the dollar was gold backed. Now, 
later on, the, the Americans, at, after the Bretton Woods Conference in, 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 in New York, they created a world situation. You have to understand that the global elite, well, again, as usual, I will not go to president because they have no say in the matter. The global elite understand that it has been proven in history that humans do not accept the hegemony of one culture for more than about 75 years. So when Britain dominated for about that period, they changed to America. Mm -hmm. Now the decision had been taken to change from America to China. That is why they fast tracked the industrial development of China. But that particular thing happened just at a time when the world was waking up. And so they are, we can now see through the ploy. And they have to, I don't want to, the, the, them to cut your video, so that's why I'm doing that, you know. And they, have to, they have to do this in order to bring down the rise in consciousness so that we can remain at the animal level and be kept as slaves. Now, unfortunately, it has not, never worked. So the Americans uh, now created a situation uh, in the Bretton Woods, Woods arrangement where the new world currency will be the dollar, gold-backed, and every other currency is forbidden to back by gold. It is an article of the, the National uh, International Monetary Fund. The, the Prime Minister of, Indo of Malaysia tried to create a special arrangement with this currency, and he was reminded yes. that, that if you do that, and he actually they killed him politically. You are, it is forbidden to try and, and that is why all those who tried it, like Gaddafi and so were killed. Oh, yeah. Now, so the, all currencies were to de define their value by conversion to the dollar. Only the dollar could be backed by gold. The aim was that America will give the all powerful because no one is going to come and check whether the dollar they are printing has any gold backing. So that gave them a free hand to just print as they want. Once there is that public confidence that it is supposed to be like that, there is the money illusion, as economics, uh, economists say, and so people continue to use pieces of paper until the Vietnam and other things came and there was so much money in circulation, people started doubting. Is there really gold to back this? And there was also the fact that France realized that that decision was unjust, and so they always used the single article they had to sabotage it, that is to use their central bank to go to the Federal Reserve whenever they had dollars and convert the dollars to gold. So around the 1970s, they went, came with $3 billion. Uncle Sam, give us gold. Say there's no gold. They say, how? How did you print this one if there's no gold? <laughs> so uh, from that moment on, uh, that system couldn't work anymore. They had to find a new system. And the new system was worked out by Andrew Kissinger, who incidentally is no longer with us. Anyone you see there is uh, an avatar. Now, uh, uh, so Andrew Kissinger, had the only other asset which they could use was the petroleum of the Arabs. Now, uh, but the Arabs are not going to accept that you should use their petroleum to defend the dollar. Mm -hmm. So there is it's one not thing, their currency. There, yeah, there is one thing in the, on earth which usually makes people to bend, and that is war. Yeah. When uh, you say no, 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 the war is a little like uh, the uh, the trick which some people who are not too pious in Africa do with their parents when they want to get married. Uh, the daughter wants to get married to that person. I was hoping for a minister to marry mm -hmm. my daughter and his field. So they started opposing them. They just bring in a child. And the parents bend immediately because uh, you, you, can't, uh, uh, you, you can't oppose them. So, you see, war, a war has that effect. So they created, manipulated a war. It's very easy for them to do that. Just send some people to go and pretend to be one group and attack the other mm -hmm. with the clothes of the other. Mm -hmm. So it's very easy. Now, so they created a war between the Arabs and, the, and Israel. And they made sure that it was even. When the Arabs are going ahead, they will help Israel. When Israel go ahead, they help the other one until they weaken themselves out of. Then the American president decided to make an open television announcement. We're going to help Israel with $2.1 billion. At the same time, they send secret agents to go and see the Arabs. Do you see what that, what that man is saying? No, no, no. People can't allow it. Can't you say, allow it. Do something. Say, what can we do? Very poor. No. You've got a weapon. That is petroleum. Make an embargo. They were afraid because, you see, cut like that, America can just come and change all the governments. So they decided first They decided first to cut back the production of petroleum by 5% every month until America reverses the policy of supporting Israel. They quickly realized it wouldn't get anywhere because the strategic reserve itself is several months. So that would not make anything. Then around the 70s, the Saudi Arabia took, was courageous enough to stop exportation of petrol to America. The price rose immediately from $3 a barrel to $12 a barrel. Now, there's something called money illusion. If you're being paid 200,000 francs CFA, and for some reason, the CFA is devalued by 50%. And at the same time, you've been given a raise of 100% so that 
The next time you will get 400,000. The very first day you receive your salary, you'll be smiling. Yeah. Very because much. you think that you have no money. Although in, in economic terms, that money has the same value like the one you had last month. But people, they tend to look at the, the, the what you have of the money. Hand, yeah. So the Arabs saw that well, yesterday was $3, now it's $12. We are rich. Then, and the kids just said, no, this is just the beginning. You can get much richer than that. All you have to do is sign two things. I will guarantee your regime. There will, there will be no toppling of your monarchy. We will make sure Israel does not attack you. And you can, we can use the reserve, the interest which we pay from the joint funds to develop your country's infrastructure to the same level as America. All you have to do is sign that from now on, all petroleum sales will be denominated in dollars, American dollars. The Arabs, they say, uh, they want to give us, all that, give us all that. They don't even ask, want us to pay. Where do I sign? They sign. So now that created a demand for dollars because people now needed dollars to go and buy petroleum, which was the biggest community co commodity in the world. I told you, I said the total value is something like $700 trillion. From that moment on, all the Americans had to do was print. All they had to do was print and go and use. Now, until recently, people started waking up. Uh, scholars of Islamic finance started explaining that this is what is called in Islam riba. That means usury. It's un unjust, unfair. So fairness in trade has to be on two levels. In terms of the commodities themselves and so on, but in terms of the exchange mechanism, it does not have to be such a way that someone is a slave and works for a different value for a different person, a while other person gets a different value. That is also considered unfair treatment. So that now started to boil, and many people were disgruntled. And when Bin Salma saw the opportunity, he started trying to negotiate with China to sell petroleum and, and uh, uh, be paid with Wang, the Chinese currency. But at the time, the cabra was still very strong. So the manipulator, suddenly they said he had killed a person in the Turkish Arabian embassy in Turkey. And there was also threat of some kind of uh, uh, United Nations sanction on him. Mm -hmm. the, poor, the poor young man had just bought a boat of five, about $450 million to enjoy himself in the ocean. So that kind of project doesn't go well with international sanctions. <laughs> no, no, no. no, no. So uh, he realized that, no, these people for now are too strong. So he decided to make an about turn. And then they immediately forgot about all the issue about the uh, embassy in Turkey and so on. They forgot all about it. And it was life as usual. Until recently, now, when the whole world is waking up, he's now come back with this issue and he's arranging with China. So you see these whole things. You have noticed that from all so, so far, I've not mentioned any president. Because the presidents, like I said again, they have no say in the matter. Thank you very much. Uh, Barista, what do you think is the role of Vladimir Putin at this time in the world, given what is happening, positively and, neg uh, and negatively? Yeah, the only regret I have about it is the fact that people are dying. They usually used to say that when two elephants are fighting, yeah. it's the grass that suffers. Yeah, true. But instead of taking this war to America, because I believe it's a bombardment for New York, <laughs> Washington, they are taking the war to the grass. Okay. That's the only regret. Okay, for strategic reasons, I feel he has a feeling that he's protecting the integrity of his country. Mm -hmm. Well, he has, he has that right, but don't kill the grass. Go for the other elephant. I should have loved a war, a real show of strength between Russia and America. Because I don't see why Ukraine should be suffering. The problem is suffering because but, of the two. But you know, Ukraine, they have spoken about this for a long time. Ukraine has said they're they not going to accept. And then later on, if you know you're the grass uh, under you. Ukraine is the only satellite country where people do those things. Yeah, that's There's true. so many others. That's why only Ukraine? Mm -hmm. My problem is the human life, which is being lost, which I regret a lot. Mm -hmm. Because I know if Russia are threatening Washington by one second, we should not be any war any longer. Because that was easy, easier. You trade in Russia, you trade in Washington, America will sit down and talk. You do, you, you, you can, you, America will continue. They will continue say, I will give $700 million. I will give yes. this. I will provide this. Arms. But they are going to Ukrainians are suffering and being polite and are dying. Yes. That's the only regret I have. The country has been destroyed. But you see, uh, again, uh, if you remember some time ago, African countries were forced, African governments, were forced to remove their hands from business. The mark in Cameroon, we used to have so they play. Yeah. That was supplying flour, supplying wheat. Mm -hmm. We had companies that were supplying rice, doing rice and those things. Like but the World Bank came and said, look, if you want to organize it, we want to restructure the economy, 
and you are benefit from these facilities, this is what you should do. Yes. Government should withdraw their hands from businesses. And the, and the government withdraw their hands from businesses that we are suffering now. Hmm. No rice. fair. No rice. The maritime transportation is affected by the Ukraine war. We cannot import as we used to and things like that. Privatized everything. So we were deceived. So I, can't, I think it's high time governments, government decide, governments to revisit that policy and not always accept all what the IMF and whatever they're telling us. Because that now, 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 now we're starting, IMF and the World Bank are just branches of, are just organizations attached to G7. Exactly. And they people are, don't know. Yes. So they, it, they are not there for the interest of you and me. Mm -hmm. No, they don't give a damn. They are there to say, how do we do to dominate these people? Mm -hmm. How do we do to make sure they don't have primary products? I will not be surprised if soon, a country that will be planting cocoa and coffee in snow. They are doing researches. Yes. They are just sleeping. And when once they succeed in doing that, they will no longer buy and coffee from Cameroon again. But that's how they intend to deceive us. By, by so doing, we we'll find ourselves that at the end of the day, that even these agricultural products we claim to have in Africa is nothing compared to what they are doing in the West. Okay, you can, you know, okay, we have an economy based on agriculture one more point in time. But our economy can no longer, the agriculture can no longer sustain the economy. Why? Because all what we use to export are no longer exportable. The guys have self-sufficient farms, self-sufficient supplies in their countries in such a way that they don't need what we have from here. So our agriculture now is, is mainly for sustainable, is, is for to keep life going in the country. But uh, you see, Russia attacked a fellow country, Ukraine used to be part of the great USSR. So they were brothers before that got separated because of, uh, I think, the policies of Reagan, Bush, and the rest, mm -hmm. and Clinton that decided to, dis to divide the USSR, to bring in the bits. It's like someone deciding to cut the US into bits because they have 51 states. Yes. To transform each state into a country. It will happen one day too. As they suddenly do the USSR, then they'll be waiting one day. No, we we'll have, have karma. What goes up can <laughs> What do you give to some other person you receive to one? They did same to the continent, like they did same to Africa. Africa, Africa was Africa. not they like sat in Berlin and, and divided right into Right now they are still struggling to divide us to rule. Mm -hmm. And they're doing strongly to rule them. And they are succeeding because we have uh, we are not strong enough to withstand their might intellectually, politically, physically, financially, economically. So we need to develop ourselves, which uh, the only best development I've seen Africa has now is intellectual capacity to reason. We now have it, which is even better than theirs. And I'm very certain that in the next 10 years, Africa will no longer be like this because our capacity to think has grown in such a way that I'm thinking of the years before uh, the Roman civilization, when Africa was up, when Africa was top, we are going to come back there. Because I say, I believe in karma. What goes up comes down. Mm -hmm. Russia, before doing what it did, I study, I study uh, the geopolitics of the world. Yeah. And I know I cannot tell you lies. Russia has a lot of backup from so many other countries as what is going on in Ukraine. I remember that there was a scandal of Biden's son, the president of America, the son, mm -hmm. had some scandal about something in Russia. I don't know what it was all about, but since Biden became president, I'm sure that thing just died down and nobody talked about it again. No. But it was that serious yeah. because uh, it involved heavy capital and a lot of money. But again, Putin is twisting the arm of those who want to change the world order. I strongly believe in that. Because the Rockefellers and people at that level, that the ones who want like to control the world. And we hear at a certain level on most of the monetary policies that we have, most of the, money, the currency we are using belongs to them. Mm -hmm. So whether we like it or not, we are forced to follow them as they lead us. But with this time of awareness, it's high time we rethink our policies. For example, I don't see why in Cameroon we should be living only on France here. We have a right to use a concurrent currency as many as we like in Cameroon. I was in all the look at economic books we read. Most of those things are of the old. We have to revisit economic books. <laughs> because you see, you go to the black market, you change dollars, you change euros, you change all currencies. I will still use them in Cameroon. Go to the bank, we do the same. Why not allow it to be free? Why block it? Because if the dollar is stronger, mm -hmm. everybody will go for dollar. Mm -hmm. Nobody will go for France. If the, 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 the yuan or whatever is stronger, we'll go for yuan and things like that. But so those rules that they put in place, it's just that some people should benefit from it. 
I don't believe it. I don't believe. It. And if Putin thinks he's fighting for the world, that's the first thing you should go for. Is you use bricks. Because I think the Russians are in full control of bricks. If you use bricks, you bring a counter world order so that those any any country will feel free to go where the world order is better. Because no reason what this world will always be ruled by some people. Mm-hmm. You might, why not like it or not? But I think God has made it that way. Mm-hmm. Some people will talk and others will be under. Yeah. Not everybody should be at, can be at the same level yeah. of thinking or reasoning. So some people will be on top. But it's better that we have competitors so that we can choose at least. Let's not become slaves to one person <laughs> out of force. Yeah. Let's be slaves because you we don't have a choice. Yeah. Let's let it be our choice. I want to be a slave. Okay. Like Africans going to Europe, is that choice we have to become slaves there? Mm-hmm. We're allowed to let them go. Mm-hmm. But Africans want to stay here to at least have the decide the, the decency of choosing their own type of slavery because mm-hmm. they want to stay around. Which means we need an alternative mindset. We need an alternative world power. We need an alternative way of looking at things in the world so that if we decide to go left, we go. If we go right, we go. Definitely. Thank you very much, uh, Barrister. Mr. Shune, how do you think tomorrow is going to look like? Yes, the summit has ended. Many things were said. Decisions have been taken. Calling for the war to end. That was the main decision there, the war to end. But <laughs> those concerns, we know it's like a sham. They left from there. Vladimir Putin was not even there in the first place. Those America said uh, uh, they are for it, but that uh, they have been trying to reach to Vladimir Putin uh, in their own terms, eh? because definitely his terms is put in, they are not looking at it. Everybody's trying to push their own agenda forward, and that's not working. So, what do you think tomorrow is going to look like? And what do you expect me to say? As Sheikh earlier said, the status quo will remain the same. Because what took place in Bali in the G20 summit was just a window dressing. The decision makers were not there. They are just there for the gallery, say, discourse, then uh, influence public yeah, opinion. To show the world that at least there was a meeting. Yes, Probably. influence public opinion for people <laughs> to think that they are doing something for their interests. But they are just they are just tools. They are there to drink wine, enjoy themselves, then uh, wait in the background for those who pull the shots. Because those who pull the shots, the, the world order, those who pull the shots, will end up to decide and agree. And when they agree, they will send the message down. And when they go down, the war will end. It's a cold war. Mm-hmm. It's a cold war. The unfortunate thing, like uh, Matthew Achu said, was that innocent citizens are dying in Ukraine. And then uh, innocent citizens, too, in Africa, we are suffering inflation, mm-hmm. rise in price hikes, then uh, manipulation. Because I begin to wonder, how the war in Ukraine is affecting the price of bitter cola in Douala. <laughs> bitter oh, cola, bitter the cola that you used to buy four for 100. Mm-hmm. You are now buying one for 100. How is the war af- in Russia affecting bitter cola? Mm-hmm. Let it affect oil. Mm-hmm. Uh, we saw the, uh, was it minister of, uh, in the, uh, Cameroon's minister was in the US the other day, mm-hmm. struggling to, to negotiate yeah. so that Oil, oil and gas prices should not uh, come up in, in Cameroon and we were very well uh, a flashback in 2008 what happened when we had price hikes in this country yeah. so uh, in terms of price hikes we are living on a time bomb mm-hmm. and uh, the earlier things are done so that this thing doesn't escalate especially this is December and next door yeah. the better yeah. but uh, what I'm really wanting to what, what I really want to understand is that uh, <clears throat> the fallout of this war in Russia uh, as uh, Maitre Achu said that when two elephants fight it is the grass that suffers. The grass is suffering and measures should be taken in a way that those two elephants who are fighting should be able to bear the consequences of their actions and counter the action rather than seeing Indian same people suffering especially in Africa and why and Cameroon it is not called for and we should not be victims of something that we didn't start. What, what can we expect from the African Union at this point? Because Africa does not have a body. That, that's the only body. So that's when we want to talk, we have nothing to talk about except them. At this point, people don't even take the African Union serious. That's why they themselves don't even contribute to it. I remember before uh, Lady Mugabe died, he was one of the only people, despite the crisis his country was going through, when they spoke about this African free trade, that people should open their borders to allow them, uh, people should trade together so that they can move easily from one country to the other. People should be able to, uh, the country should be able to be free and just some little control should be put in place. And they had a whole 
small budget to run everything. Mugabe was one of the people who stood up and gave one billion, despite the crisis his country was going through. But the others, we had, we know the giants in the African economy that we know, we call them. People were expecting them to say something they did not. A country like Nigeria under Buhari ratified the African free trade like two, almost two years later, under serious uh, back and forth and so on. And so, what ca what? can be done for the African Union to either they dissolve it or they make another one or what can be done to make people really find interest in it because when you have a body you're not contributing in it you don't even attend you send representative major decisions cannot be taken so the body does not grow look at right now we have a war in a, there's a crisis, serious crisis going on in the Democratic Republic of, of Congo DRC and Rwanda has been accused most people praise Kagame for the good work he's doing in Rwanda, but people don't know majority of the money he used to develop Rwanda, he's destabilizing DRC. He has a whole rebel group there that is taking care of what is happening in DRC, selling the minerals he's taking there to British companies and USA to develop his country. The crisis now there is at its peak. We have even journalists on the field right now there. So many people are now turning like, it's now people are really seeing that, but what is Kagame doing? Uh, uh, but people are loving what he's doing for his country. At least you can see, you see where the money is going to, but is it worth destroying another country to build your own country? So, and the African Union cannot even take a decision on that because there, there are crises going on almost in every country. What can be done for the African Union for, it, for presidents to love this union and take it as theirs? Who is benefiting from the chaos that is taking place in the RDC? The West. Because even uh, Rwanda is just picking the crumbs. Mm -hmm. They're selling it to, to, you, to them. You saw, you saw what uh, Rwanda, the MOU that Rwanda signed with the UK uh, some months behind, accepting that Africans from all other nationalities could be repatriated and sent back to Rwanda because all the other countries refused, refused. to sign that treaty. True. Okay. This very question goes just to confirm the fact, as we earlier said, that the African Union is a toothless bulldog. And this message I'm sending now goes to Musa Faki. Musa Faki should make a name for himself now. Because he is the executive officer of uh, the African Union. Mm -hmm. The African Union, the only way for them to progress is to stop receiving subventions from the European Union, from the United Nations, from all those other countries and be able to receive contributions from, from African nations that can states. build and run that organization yeah. so they, are, they can take independent decisions at the interest of the African people that they purportedly pretend to represent. Look at what happened. When Gaddafi was brutally murdered by the West, what did the African Union do? They stayed mute. Look at a president like Robert Mugabe that we lost some years ago to age. Mm -hmm. He was tapped by the West as one of the most brutal dictators in Africa. Black just listed. because he, he refused to subdue to their whims and caprices. Mm -hmm. Mugabe was never a bad leader. Embargo everywhere, food not going in. The he was train, never. Nothing. But because Mugabe refused to dance to their tune, they tapped him, used their media outlets, mm -hmm. RFE for the French, Voice of America for the US, BBC, and you know, those are propaganda machines that they use to brainwash Africans. Do you know how much the British government spends on BBC to operate in Africa every year? And their purpose is to brainwash Africans, brainwash us, usurp our culture. VOA, RFE, they are playing the same role. And that's how they do, and they brainwash our leaders, and we now stand against our own leaders, thinking that they are working for our interest. How can it really work? Africa must unite. We must work as a team, as I earlier said. Job, geopolitics works now in, in blocks. If we don't unite and work as a geopolitical block in Africa, we cannot survive. Look what just happened two, three weeks ago, in Equatorial Guinea. Cameroonians were beaten and bundled out of Equatorial Guinea. Africans being beaten and sent out of African territory. It is unacceptable. Look at Gabon next door. Can you buy a flight and fly to Gabon next door? You need to go to the rigorous, rigor, rigorous consular activities. Whereas the, the, the Europe, see, see how the European Union works. 
If you want to travel to France yeah, now, you once can, you get yeah. a Schengen visa, that's it permits it. you to go to all the Schengen countries in the European That's what the Union. African Free Trade stands for. And that is what the African Free they Trade stands for. They don't want to ratify. For. They refuse to ratify. Who is stopping them from ratifying? They are the imperialist, neo-colonialist influence on those countries that are influencing them not to sign because of French benefits. If you sign it, you will lose this French benefits. We will not give you loans on this. The project that we wanted to sponsor, IFD, those are what they're doing, the French in International, is it France International Corporation, blah, 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 all those things. Those are weapons of mass destruction against African development. They pretend to come and invest, they want to build bridges, they want to build roads, but what are they doing? They build those roads at the detriment of our development. Because what do they take in exchange? What they take is in exchange is more than what they give in. Mm -hmm. So uh, basically, uh, what I'll just have to say is that Musa, Fik Musa Faki and all the African Union leaders, I think they should strategize and come out with their own geopolitical block because without that, Africa cannot emerge. Thank you very much. Uh, Sheikh, let's talk about how, how can we be with the African Union? Mm -hmm. Because at this point, a lot of things are changing. You said there's a reawakening, but, but it's not working. And we, life needs to go on. We need to move on. And the body is still just there with things happening every day. What can be done? I think the Africans must take back their power. We are, we are living in the old paradigm in which we are expecting a benevolent leader, a benevolent father, I say the masculine gender because of the uh, patriarchal paradigm in which we are. We are expecting such a person to come and save the Africans. There is not going to be any such person. The first thing is we must take back our own power. Some of our African brothers have been deceived uh, as a way to co-opt them and got they're taken into mystical orders, such as Freemasonry, uh, Rose Crusade, and things of that nature. As, as far as my knowledge goes, only the top hierarchy of that measure, of that thing, is actually siding with Satan. In other words, the first, second, third degree missions are good people. And the, the knowledge which they learned there, let them use for the benefit of humanity. Why do you think that the Rosicrucians sometimes decide that on a single day, all Rosicrucians worldwide should think about something? Research has been done on the science of consciousness in the world. You have, for example, the Hard Math Research Institute in America and many others. And they've actually come up with figures that when the human consciousness focuses with love and high vibration on a particular thing, then you only require the square root of 1% of the population to part, take part for the uh, uh, universal etheric energy field to start to manifest that thing which they're looking for. In other words, Africans would do better to calm down, develop a feeling of love for the nature, love for the creation of God, love for the Almighty, and love for one another. And then they can now visualize with certainty the good avenue without having to think about how it should come. Because our own brains are very limited, the means of God are multiple. The Almighty God says in the Quran, Man the one who has the feeling of God consciousness will always be taken out of difficult situations and will be enriched from sources he could never think of. In other words, if it what comes to you anticipating, it means that that is not the direct influence from God because what God can bring, your mind could never imagine. So we should visualize this good avenue in calmness and harmony. Recently, so, uh, there's a certain organization which is uh, uh, striving for progress and peace and love in the world con called Connecting Consciousness. Uh, my, your humble servant happens to be a member. And recently, there was a danger of war breaking out somewhere. And this organization just sent a, a message to all the members. There are about 100,000 of them worldwide. In Africa, unfortunately, there's only 1,300, most of them in South Africa. Mm -hmm. That they should they give the full procedure to bring their consciousness, to send a certain vibration to the ether. And I, I wouldn't go into the details of how it happened, but immediately we can feel the change. That is the kind of thing which Africans should think. And we were the champions of this before Europeans came up and watched us. 
Now the, the science of medicine itself, which had been deformed by Rockefeller because of his own petroleum interests around the 1900s, is now coming back to what it's supposed to be. And vibratory medicine is coming back into focus. There is something called the med bed, which has been brought by our friends from beyond the planet, which is going to be implemented, and we're going to soon have things like age regression. Have you thought, why is it that when you read certain books, you find that our ancestors, like Noah, like uh, Abraham, like Seth, and many, used to live over a thousand years. Why is it that thou can live less than a hundred? Because the bad guys, and I did not name some of them in my list, but they are too high, for, had been systematically deforming our DNA in order to decrease our lifespan, so as to make us not wise enough to be able to see their aim. Because if you can live for long enough, you start gathering enough wisdom to be able to see their deceit. So, but if you just, if you have to struggle, now I'm 62 years old, and if I have to finish that and die, what little I've acquired, someone else will start from, from zero. And so we'll never be able to get there. But now, with the arrival of the med bed, we're going to have things like that kind of technology. Now, when I saw one of the frequencies which is used to correct DNA, people should get to know that. It's 528 hertz. I decided to see if I could design an electronic circuit which can generate that. I designed a circuit that, you see, uh, welding with the iron now, I have to get the young ones who have newer eyes to, to see some of those things. So I wanted to go fast. So I realized the fastest way to produce that frequency to hear by myself is through a pipe. So I did calculation to find a what length of pipe when blown can produce that frequency. And when I did it on blue, then I suddenly realized one thing. Many of our traditional healers, when you go to them, you find them with a long pipe. I also found that in the aborigines in Australia, in Australia and the Hippo Indians of India, they all have another system where you used to heal people just with sound. That's when I got to realize that this whole issue of sound being a nocive and being used now to pervert humanity was brought in 1930 by Rockefeller again, who changed and standardized the A minor frequency at 440 hertz so that all pianos, saxophones, and musical instruments were programmed to that. And so the music which goes on brings in prostitution, drugs, and alcohol, and so on. Before that, music was a therapy which heals people from different diseases. And we had that in Africa before the Europeans came. It is high time Africans develop confidence in themselves. And there is the day we have the power, the, you know, the psychic ability to be able to connect to whatever source and bring out a situation. The situation we have, a solution in Africa, is not necessarily what has been done in Europe. There have been many civilizations which have happened in the world. Not all have passed through our way. When you look at the pyramids, for example, of, of Jaisa, you're going to find rocks which are 70 tons in weight. You find certain obelisks which have been carved out of stone in Egypt, which weigh 1,800 tons. What kind of crane did they use to lift it? You understand then that that ancient civilization was more advanced than us, even if they did not pass through electronics and the, uh, the uh, automobile. So you have, have the arrogance of humanity, who are now, some of them are building huge antennas to see if they can capture some communication from outside space. They are with the naivety that there are people who are still primitive enough to use the tool we are using for communication. In South Africa, you have someone called Elizabeth Clara, and that you can find out on the internet. He wrote a book. She wrote a book. The name of the book was Beyond the Light Barrier. Elizabeth Clara, the South African, was married to a person called Akon. Akon was a man from planet Meton in Alpha Centi Proxima Centauri star system, which is four light years from Earth. And we are here waiting for some. Do you know if you have to use the, the, the radio waves to communicate to Alpha Centauri? Do you know how, when you say hello, you have to wait for four years and three months for you to get there? So it's clearly not that means we should use by our brothers on space. But because of our arrogance, we think that we are at the top of civilization. So one even say, no, if they are here, why don't they show themselves? The few have been caught by America. If you saw what they did to them, you would not be. they tortured them to extract information about technology. So if they are here, the only thing they can do is hide. But they are. They are here. When you hear the fire, the fire which took place in paradise, a town which is near Carol, where a whole town burned down. They claimed that it was a, an electric short circuit followed by a wind. In other words, there was a short circuit which lit a house, then wind blew from that, one, from that house to the next one, and from that one to the next one. Even in a Hollywood movie, you cannot believe that. What actually happened was that some people had come from Alpha and Jury were trying to fast track the development of human technology. And the bad guys who want us to stay down as slaves decided to destroy them. So we uh, uh, on the earth right now should learn. Uh, you know, sometimes I ask some people who are very adamant. I said, now, the last time he traveled, 
Did you stop on the way and go into the forest in order to present yourself to the leader of the guerrillas? Uh, no, because uh, so that doesn't mean that the leader of the guerrilla now can say that you people do not exist because you have not presented yourself. That, that is how some of these our brothers are five thousand years ahead of us in technology. Others are one thousand, one million five hundred years, one million five hundred thousand years ahead of us. Uh, so uh, we are now in a situation in the world where this contact is happening already now. Africa should not be again the last like we've always been in the past. We were going to be fighting to acquire what is now in Europe <laughs> as technology. When the Europeans are looking for something else, <laughs> Salvatore Pais was pushed by the CIA to patent certain flying devices which are anti-gravity and many other types of technology in America because they don't want China to do it and not have the patents. So uh, Africans, my final message, know that you are the, the Islamic term for it is Khalifa. In other words, you are the representative of the almighty creator here. Don't act like the manager who is given the charge of a company and you are waiting for the board of directors to tell you every little move you have to do. Then you, you show that you do not deserve the appointment of manager. The Christian version of it is we are created in the image of God. So if you are the image of God, you are supposed to manage the world in, in his, on his behalf. You are the person who acts here and act and be, show gratitude for all the gifts he has given in the world. And you don't do that by destroying. You do that by showing love. Know that we are all one. There's something called the law of attraction. Anything you do to someone else comes back to you. If we can understand only that, then we'll get, we'll get to see that the biggest heroes here in the world are not measured materially. The material things you're going to leave behind you and go away. What is important is what you don't. So I ask all, all Africans, please, sit down, meditate, and imagine yourself attending a funeral. And when you look inside the coffin, you realize that it is your own body which is there. And everyone, because you're the one who's there, they're talking about you. Ask yourself, I would like, what are five things I like to hear people talk about me when I'm dead? Every time I've done this exercise, the, the word money never came out. You should understand we have a mission here and material things have nothing to do with it it is what how much love we show how useful we were to others not to ourselves all the great structures we have the sun does not produce light for itself the best fruit trees do not produce those fruits for themselves so if we africans can develop love for one another and for humanity and the creation at large we will stop felling trees they had a, a, a conference here in Yuala uh, to fight about the environment, and someone gave a very good lecture. That, what, oh man. When I mentioned the number of locks I found, because where my second map is, I could see hundreds of lorries passing. Some of those trees have made 400 years to reach that, that height. They cut down, sell down, so that they give away price. Immediately, because you saw the interest of one Frenchman at stake, this man started saying, No, if those trees are old, you had to cut them down. So, what is he fighting for? Is he really fighting for the interests of the uh, of the continent, or fighting to satisfy certain sponsors, are going to be paying his air, air ticket and uh, hotel bills as he's traveling. That shows lack of sincerity. Look, Africans, so wake up, take back your own power. Stop waiting for someone else to tell you. It is not the president who will come and solve the problem. The Almighty God says something very clear in one of His holy books. He says, "In Allah, la yura hatta yura yura he does not change the condition of any people or a person until that person first changes what is inside himself. If you want changes to come outside, change within. If you force and say a good leader, why did they kill Jesus Christ? Is it because he was a bad man? It is because those who are around him do not vibrate at the same frequency. Why did they, why was Tankara, Sankara killed? So you see, this thing is not going to be done at like I say, stop looking at politicians. Let us change all ourselves and automatically those the rest will come. That's my advice. Thank you very much, Sheikh. Uh, Barista, we have like uh, 20 minutes to the end of the program. Let's talk about, do you think these leaders who are in the African Union at this moment, 
we have presidential elections going on in they're going to go on in nigeria very soon uh, kenya just had their new president the former vice president william ruto he took over kenyatta uh, other countries are having changes then with crises that are going on Ethiopia finally two weeks ago sat uh, on the table with the Trigarian leaders uh, and the, that's the african union Senate representatives uh, obasanjo former president of nigeria and uru kenyatta were the ones who went there and president abi or prime minister abi ahmed he accepted he has always accepted in the first place to sit on the table with those Tigrayan leaders and they finally signed a, a peace we are hoping is the last one because the one they signed in august phil and then they signed this other one now and we have the crisis in drc in cameroon there's crisis in different countries sudan there's crisis like do you think we need to wait for other leaders all these ones and please can actually do something to build a block that everybody can believe in i believe our leaders can do that but the problem is that they are still to understand one thing the biggest industry in the west is the army the biggest strategists are found in the army because there there is discipline, there is order. Till the day we transform our military into a big company, so many things are going to, are going to change because there will be discipline and there will be order. Right now there is a lot of disorder because the civil society is nowhere trained to live in order and discipline. Yeah. Uh, thoughts fly in and out, and we show to gather the pieces to see what we can do. And at the end of the day, it's difficult to have a consensus. So I, I think all that comes from the West is not that bad. But we have to do it like uh, the Chinese treat Kung Fu. Kung Fu is a martial arts that you don't use the energy. You take the energy of your opponent. You transform it into your own energy with your own energy and you give it back to you. By so doing, you are more effective because your energy is even like called. Yes. <laughs> your energy is being con uh, conserved while the other person is suffering. All this has all what we have got from the West. Let's take it and transform it into energy. Just like if you see petrol, it's from fossil, something that got rotten years ago. The new, uh, the new energy that we have comes from. Some other thing. We can come with a toilet. Can you imagine? The rubbish that is a toilet transformed into energy for you to use. So we can take that rubbish from the West. We transform it into something good and better for you and me to change Africa. African Union as a body cannot stand. Because we are so divided and so indisciplined and programmed to function in separate ways. I strongly believe that we should resuscitate the regional bodies first. Okay, so it needs to start from there, first. not like focusing on the African Union first. No, no, African Union break will, break will not work. Down. Yes, we'll break it down. Mm -hmm. There's a SADEC in South Africa, Semak. there's, there's SEMAC in Central Africa, there's ECOWAS, mm -hmm. there is the Arab, whatever, and there's a, the Eastern Africa um, organizations. We should so make sure those st structures, those regional bodies, are strong enough. For us to have unified decisions and the leaders of those uh, various bodies can now unite to build up a united africa because if we leave it as it is you can imagine how you decide to feed uh, fowls in some uh, 50 fowls or you can about 50 about 50 pieces of corn and just, and just throw no, everybody's going to be no, everybody's to going to feed nobody. Crush yes, and that's how African Union is, and <laughs> we are just like that, and we can't. It just so what happens? What most? What profits most of the people there is that they have comfortable salaries, they live well, on our backs, but what did they do in return to us Africans? Nothing. Nothing. They can't do anything. I can't blame them because they can't really do anything. We went, came back, coming down to issue like uh, the Rwanda uh, RDC yeah, yeah, conflict. I'm surprised that even the Central African Union is not even talking about it. We neighbors see it happen. Nobody's coming. Why? Because this union, this thing, they are not strong enough to withstand the heat. 
Why, why, why did Mugabe have had a problem? Because of land reforms. He brought the land back, the land back to the Zimbabwe people, and the Western world got into chaos. Yeah. They helped us, they wanted to kill him. But why did Sadek, the South African Association, not protect him? Because they are weak, not strong enough. Look at ECOWAS, they tried to bring in a common currency. What has happened? It has just died as if it never happened. Yes, you know, nobody talks about it again. No newspaper, nothing. nothing. It's just silence. Just to show how weak we are. Look, even the Arab world, the Arab League. Morocco and Algeria don't talk to each other. Mm. Tunisia and Egypt don't talk to each other. Morocco's how do you think they went up and then they decided to come back to the African Union? Yes. Mugabe said they should not take them because yes. they refused that they were not Africans. They, they wanted to join the European Union. They refused that you are Africans. Yes. And they were hands in the middle. Now they decided to come back and the African Union. Mugabe asked them in the speech, why are you welcoming them? <laughs> they just have just come up to continue with the divide and rule syndrome to make African Union weak. Yeah. That's the point. So if so if the leader bodies are not strong enough, we we'll take these energies. Because no money thing, money never used to be our thing. Mm -hmm. Our economy was just based on money. Exchange. If we had exchange, we had a different means of uh, a medium of exchange, which is no money. We we'll take that energy, convert it to some other thing, and we can transform it. We only need to go to get the fine brains. We have fine brains in Africa. We have people who can think. But I still believe they must go under the canopy of the army. Because then they will be disciplined and order. They will be they will be prepared to do strategy. Because I don't if you look at the if you look at look at the US for example. To be a president of America, you must afford a war, you must be an army or something. Why? Because you know you are you have you can follow order and you are disciplined. That is it's simple. And that's why I try I, when you go, you go down to the structures, FBI, CIA and the rest, they function like companies. The guys are well paid, and they and they come to schools and recruit the best brains, the best brains. If you see, yeah, when they come, when they don't contact any type of person to recruit in sale or FBI. They go to get academic records and they check it out, and they come, they contact only the best guys in class to come and join them. Then they give you everything for you to make sure that the country is well run. Mm -hmm. This is the type of thing we can copy and do this, do it here. And another thing what is killing us is this thing of writing exams. Exams is the worst thing in Africa. Not the test of true knowledge. We don't means we don't prepare. We don't prepare to know. We prepare to write exams to and pass. pass. Because if you pass exams, your father will be happy, your mm -hmm. parents will be happy, mm -hmm. and that is it. Mm -hmm. That is very simple. You have a certificate that but, shows something, but you, but you don't know, to know the next how. Day to ask him the same questions out of exams, he might not be capable of reacting or replying. It did cram work. So they are not even being taught. Yes. And if you go to a teaching style. Why Japanese are, are learning how to make computers? They're teaching you they're they're pass or graphs or pass. And I miss cosplay. <laughs> plants and things like that. Oh, come on. It's a hard time we revisit some of these things to be strong. <laughs> that was it. The Western world, what, they, what some of those things they brought are not that bad. But it's equally possible to take what is bad and transform it into positive energy. And that's how we should think. And that's what we should do. Do you think it it's possible. easy at this point to just get up and change the educational system? Because it's as if their hands are tied. Because if their hands are not tied, what is wrong? Like we know that this thing at this moment, we are talking about it every day. How, why are we studying a hibiscus flower? <laughs> For Christ's sake. And the technology is there. Our children cannot, even those in technical schools cannot even produce watches. So like, what is the problem that this is not being changed? We've been programmed to be what we are. If you go back, go back, when you were in primary school, the type of thing they were teaching you would never help you in life. Up to now, I, I still don't use most of those things that I was taught in. Yeah. What I've learned in normal life is much more than what I read in books. Yeah. So we're programmed to read particular books at a particular time, and we can change that mentality, but it has to take time. But to take time, you don't have to, you don't have, to have the best brain to put down the strategy to lay down how to, you say, okay, in the next 30 years, or next 35, since we have Cameroon in 2035, mm -hmm. as we emerge, what do we do? Yeah. That's how we start, we start thinking. What do we change? put the think tank together, put them on a kind of army, let them be like soldiers. We treat them like soldiers. Put them on a canopy, and you'll see things will change. People will come up with ideas that you will never imagine. Bright ideas that everyone look at it and shake their and say, look, this is a good idea. You know what I mean? When something is good, you can't hide it. No, no. It becomes so evident that you will like it. And when once you know you have been the guy in charge of that, that, that in place, that strategy, and it's a pretty place, like everyone likes it, everything will go, everything will just follow. That's how it is, as easy as that. Everything will just follow. But you see, these days we don't have a real think tank in Africa. We don't have people like Sheikh 
We don't encourage them to what they do because they are thinkers. Yeah. They look at it and think. Physics. Both physically. Physics. physics. They put the spiritually, box. Spiritually, yes. They put everything in one box and mm -hmm. put it in their head and try to come up with a solution. Mm -hmm. We don't have that thing. We need to have a mission strategy. A mission charge of strategy in every aspect of life. We need those things. The West does that. It's telling about a lot of esoteric things that are coming from the West. Mm -hmm. But Africa is... We are much more advanced in those things than most of them. But the thing, we don't use it. The other day, I, I saw a universe of witchcraft in South Africa. <laughs> I was impressed. People might, people might say all types of things, but I was impressed that for once, South Africans have decided that this thing you call witchcraft, let's take it to university level. But you go to London. The biggest witches are found in London. <laughs> How can you explain that? You go to you put, uh, somebody holds cats. A place you cast up in front of you and you can't believe it. We clap. We clap. <laughs> no, that is good. That what we say is good. But no, when somebody on. says he foresee something, no, this is bad. This should be killed. I, you, yes. I've, got, I've been in court where an old mother that fell on a roof top. Mm -hmm. I see where you're coming from. I was in my plane. And I've young, I've young I've, that. <laughs> those are things we should develop. <laughs> we shouldn't discourage and make it better for you and me. I like profitable for you and me. Can you imagine that old shoe? Uh, all box of match and you are playing in America. That's super, super, super sonic. <laughs> well, why can't we think like we have to start thinking like that in Africa to make things work? Yes. To make life better for you. It's the year they'll stone you. Yes, that's you do like, that, you're dead. You'll be killed. You'll be killed. Have We're you trying to do that. Then you're flying the When night. I saw that woman, no, I was scared because it was. <laughs> <laughs> it was a monotony. I was scared, but it was. Yeah, when I come, come and think about it, I said, look, if we can transform this shoe. <laughs> into a real jet. <laughs> hey, come on. They can carry many everything. people. Can, can she did not buy perfume. You take ah, <laughs> you take two hours, two minutes in America Man. or in China. <laughs> you travel like that. Oh, come on. Is something good? It would not be good. It would be better yeah. than what we have now. Yeah. And then you make sure that you make sure there's no fall that you cannot fall. You cannot fall from it because what time we play that you fall from it. It's terrible. It means it's open. It's not, it's not, it's not closed. Yeah. But in any case, Africa is a cradle of civilization, a cradle of the world. We need to go back to it to survive in the community of nations. Because the West, they have a camp, they're building their own civilization. The Asians have understood. Yeah. The Arabs have not understood that so we build their own. The Asians have no, understood. Yes. I like that. So, we, are, so we, we, we Africans are still not understanding that that is how we have to go. Whether we like it or not, we need our thinkers. The first thing is the thinkers and the strategists. We have to start from there. Start building it and program it with time. I learned that before the even we, we know about computers, it that we used the American Army for a hundred years. Before computers was even like make Except everybody know about it. We used for a hundred years. I can imagine. So they had that thing, I kept it secret. Yeah. Why can't we have our own tool? Yeah. We can start by that. But I believe as the way Afri we Africans are, getting the army will become discipline. I will believe in because if you see if you see a military man respecting just the flag, you know that he's been trained to be pro, be disciplined and respect order. We need that in Africa. And you, uh, Mr. Schroeder mentioned the fact that uh, democracy is not really good for Africa. I buy that idea because when we had kingdoms, there was order. Nobody was fighting for anything. Yes. Everybody, Everybody knows that is this person. You knew your place. People are concentrating yes. on other things. So democracy can cause more confusion than we can ever think of. Yeah. That's why in Cameroon we are struggling to understand what is going on. It's not easy. <laughs> because it's not our thing. You will see a, you will see a normal Cameroonian kneel down or bow down before a chief. Yes. But the governor who is like the boss of the region, mm -hmm. you insult him. Mm -hmm. Or the deal or whatever, you insult him. Mm -hmm. you, meanwhile, they have the deal or the governor seem to have more power even than that chief. Mm -hmm. Why? It's because our mindset is still that way. Yeah. We have to go back to our roots. To our traditions, or that, or that if we have to survive in this world, we don't go back to tradition, we remain slaves all our lives. They claim those people were not educated, but like they, they were the chiefs, they were they built. Of like course. when you look at things which happened in those the days, they in, were the in, leaders. In no, the chef, I just said it, Sumanguru in, uh, in Mali. We do about read about him. Yeah. They say he had witchcraft, but yes. why he was a tough leader, he had spiritual powers. Yes, well, but what has happened? He led his people to yes. where they, everybody happened? could talk about it. We've been divided by the West and brought to where we are until we get that consciousness, which is, I think, is coming because intellectually we are very developed, better than they 
that they did in their own system of education, mm -hmm. we can't realize that what we had was better. And until we revive it, we can't go nowhere. But I say, I believe every country should make a ministry in charge of such strategies to how to develop the country. And it should go through the army. Because that is, I've seen so far, that's the only best place to train you about uh, uh, other law, uh, uh, how to respect the country, how to abide by the law, how to respect your flag, how to respect hierarchy, how to listen to others. Because in the army is like that. We need that type of thing in our society today. We need it very badly. Definitely. You wanted to add to what, uh, yes, what he's uh, saying before uh, I could tell. Yeah, when he was talking about education, I mm -hmm. thought about the Ishanko bone. It's a bone which was found in the Congo and is dated 22,000 years before Jesus Christ. It showed that the culture which existed there was already very advanced in mathematics mm -hmm. in Africa. Uh, and I also wanted to make people see success stories. We talked about Zimbabwe. Let us see how Robert Mugabe managed to outsmart the West. Despite everything else. Despite done. all the, the embargoes. Now, all the embargoes and everything, he nevertheless succeeded in transferring land to his people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now, when the, uh, all the uh, hitting started, he managed, stood all the sanctions to such an extent that when he went into a, an African Union meeting, the other heads of state stood up mm -hmm. because they all could be witness to the courage of Mugabe. He had done something which they could not dare to do. And when he was becoming old, there were people like Shaga, uh, Morgan Shangarai, who had already sold out to Britain and were willing to just kind of hand over Zimbabwe to the British. So Mugabe would not let what he has fought for for all his life to be taken away. So what did he do? He used the wisdom of Africa. He discussed, obviously, behind the scenes with Munangagwa, his vice president. Mm -hmm. The same thing was done by Ayatollah in Iran, so I know that strategy is quite... Uh, so, uh, uh, Nangwagwa started to criticize him. Oh, that kind of, kind of open uh, play acting feud <laughs> took place to certain extent that Munangagwa escaped to South Africa. Mm. And when Munangagwa was doing that, the population I said, ah, looks like this man can remove that old fool from, mm. from the place. So, the whole population put, stood behind Munangagwa. Then, now, a kind of a coup d'etat took place. Yeah, now, now, but very what, comfortable coup d'etat. Yes, where <laughs> visitors could come and visit the yeah, president, where he could talking. go at the Open University and hand over the, the certificates to people who had finished their thing. He, he, was talking, the coup he could talk any time uh, he right, wanted. Right. So it's a real coup. <laughs> now, uh, the, when the population now voted in a kind of passport, because you know, voting is just, a, it's just make sure. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. The real elite already know who is going to win. And they just make people to switch like that. So that people, you're tired to your left, you go right. When you can't go right, you go left. Why is it always like that? Because it's just a way to deceive the population. So they now voted for Munangogwa, and then the Munangogwa quickly signed a decree offering, I think, $10 million or something mm -hmm. to make Zimbabwe uh, Mugabe to rest mm -hmm. his retirement in peace. <laughs> and uh, the British uh, Foreign Secretary came quickly to visit the Munangogwa, but I think after a few weeks, he quickly realized that they had This done. is not where I'm to be. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same system. The same thing. <laughs> But that helped. They did not kill him. No, it's very intelligent because all those who have tried to do it differently, have, we, we see what is happening today. Right. So, mm -hmm. Mugabe was uh, a very wise man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I remember some of his expressions. Mm -hmm. He said, don't be discouraged because people hate you. Look at the pig. It is hated by a whole religion. It doesn't prevent you from getting fat. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Shune, where the and, and, and he said that uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you want to impose homosexuality in Africa. I want to get married to President Obama. If you accept my marriage, okay, I'll accept the <laughs> President Obama never talked about it again. <laughs> and he says it openly oh, and directly. Openly. He doesn't care. Okay. You get married to me, okay, I'll accept my marriage. <laughs> <laughs> this, that was a big one. Last words to end the program. Like, what, what do we wish for our continent? Uh, what do we wish for our continent? At the age of globalization, I don't see why at this global age, the French should have a different educational system. The Americans have a different, different educational system, and we, Africa, we have a, di a different educational system. Yeah. We should have a global educational system because we are in the global age. And uh, I want to let you know that the World Bank is one of those agents <laughs> because the book commission in Cameroon in our primary and secondary schools have scraped out workbooks that all of us used which makes us to become practical, to know how to study well in school and begin to, to write exams well and succeed. They have scraped out the workbooks. 
uh, because they are financing the, 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 the they are financing the Ministry of uh, Education and whatsoever, and it is really creating a discrepancy because the children cannot really make up very well. I mean, in Cameroon, and then uh, we have to uh, return back to our customs and traditions. In that way, we'll be able to regain our identity because we have really lost our identity. And once you have lost your identity, you don't have a way forward. Yeah. So we should come back to our mm -hmm. customs and mm -hmm. traditions, and uh, we'll be able to to develop a geopolitical strategy for ourselves and yeah. be able to work out our own way forward, yeah. rather than doing copy and paste. They'll come and tell it us what to work. do, and we, we do it. It's not going to help us. Mm -hmm. So uh, with your permission, I want to extend uh, royal greetings to His Royal Majesty for Nabumbi II the fun of Bafut, the land of legendary royalty. You're going back to your roots. That's good. You have started already. <laughs> yeah, last words. Feel free. If we say we're going back to our roots. As well as the fun of Bangkok, who was like a family. Okay. I stayed in Africa. I greetings to them. And I know how to pay my respects all the time because they're royalties. Definitely. That said, I just to come out with the point that Mr. Shude mentioned. There was a project to construct University housing, but it was realized that the students were living in towns like normal people, mm -hmm. which is not normal. So, in all the universities, there was to build hostels to keep students together. Mm -hmm. But the World Bank now said, No, it's not important to what we can do. Why? It means that education is not important to them. To them, no. Thank you. Because I, I'm from a boarding school. Like, it was like my senior year, the Sheikh were in the same mm -hmm. We knew because of being that bond. That between the two of us, there are certain things that we cannot do to each other. Mm -hmm. On top of that, we educate in such a way that we can fit into the society. If the World Bank starts destroying the base of our education, it means that they want that our kids should be worse than us in the future. Yes. Why it's supposed to be the best. If you go to if you go abroad, students live in one area. Yeah. There are hostels. Which is like a village, village is only for students. People prepare their children yes. for college. They are going for college. And leave them there. Yes. And that, that is it until the holidays. You yeah. can't pick them up. Yeah. Why can't we do that here? I'm so I'm so ashamed that when I get up in the morning, I see students moving from bars, moving around the roads. Around the university. So, those those that, is, going to school. that is that is the highest all place. Of, all types of funny things in town. How do you think that child, that child can concentrate? On the contrary, if you put them in the same environment, they are the, 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 the tendency is that all of them grow up together, all of them grow up together, and they will guys our future, and they're going to be better in the future because they're better than you and me. Because not, the bond is there, and they will be together. You will notice nowadays, um, ex students unions are propping up. Yeah. Why? Because we're now looking for that bond that we've, that we've lost in society. Yeah. The bond is no longer there. And that is what the Western world wanted us to look like. It's divided. Everybody's on side. So they come in and impose what they want. If you don't have that consciousness to build it back, I'm sorry. We're lost. As, as you were saying, like uh, where there are universities, that's where you have all the bars, yes. all the snacks, everything. <laughs> like <laughs> just at the entrance of the school. And you have this mayor who come and, like, uh, let me take an example in Buya. This one comes and remove it, another one comes and allow it. Like, you don't understand what is happening. You see a bag of people coming back later. They are all finally students. What are they looking forward to? Yeah. That's just to cue into what you said. Sheikh, last words on the program. My last words are from Mali said. Unite for the good of your children. Unite for the children of Babylon. Babylon, to them, to the Rastafarians, are all the exiled Africans who went out to, due to slavery, both the European and Arab slave to slave trade and so on. We should unite because individually we can't do a lot. Yeah. And we should unite with love. If we do not have love for one another, any kind of thing we start, it will be very easy to separate us to raise one person against the other. Mm -hmm. The enemy is going to fight us on four levels. On the physical level, they will manipulate you, put poisons in our body through the water we drink, through the medicines we take, through the oil we rub, through the air we breathe. We should be uh, confident enough to have our own intellectuals, like my brothers have said, who will advise the government on measures to take to prevent and protect the population from that. On the etheric level, that is the level of the astral body. They're going to uh, incite us to get harmful substances, like drugs, like uh, marijuana, mm -hmm. like, ethyl, like alcohol, Shamadol, like uh, 
perverted sexual activities, lower vibration, and bring about something called possession, where extra dimensional demonic entities will possess people and have those demonic entities have direct control in society. We should get rid of that. On the mental level, so the mental body is rooted in the brain, but it covers the whole body. We should fight the tendency to bring us down there through discord and infighting, division. Ideas which set us apart, which make us to fight one another. We, our willingness to be together should transcend that ability. And on the spiritual level, the level of the spiritual body, we should not accept to bow down to any other person other than the one true creator. Not anyone who will represent the creator should be an intermediary between him and us. This ploy which they made to make God into a white man has been one of the biggest things which has ruined Africans. When you go and nail down in front of a cross, and the person on the cross has blue eyes and blonde hair, you cannot, after taking that person as your God, accept a person coming from the at the airport with the same features and take him as your equal. The two don't go together. And it was very easy to, to dominate Africans, having spiritually or psychologically dominated them in that way. I've taught company executives here in this town for more than 10 years. Three quarters of the students were expatriates. So I, I can tell you with full knowledge. Some of those expatriates had 10 times the salary of the local people, even though they had the same ability, same qualifications. And it was accepted because of the brainwashing. Because if you said that someone who is one tribe should get the double the salary of a person or a person who is another tribe, they will revolt. Why then do you accept another one because of his color and everything? Ten times your salary because of the brainwashing. Mm. So we must grow out of that, otherwise we will not get anywhere. If we can grow out of those four levels of manipulation, we we'll join one another with love, and then we we'll focus with our own power. We don't wait for a leader to come and tell us what to do. And Africa will spring back and dominate the world the way they did in the past in history. Thank you very much, Sheikh. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of the program. We took like 11, more, 11 minutes after the time because we started late, so we kind of balanced it. So thank you very much for watching. This program is going to be rebroadcasted on Monday at 3 p.m., so you can watch it again. We're on all our social media outlets, streaming live, Facebook, YouTube. You can also watch the program there. So I want to thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Barrister, for your time. Sheikh, it's been a pleasure having you in the studio. Mr. Shune, I hope you're with because you've been so... You know what I mean. <laughs> it's been difficult to have you. You know why. So thank you very much for coming. Stay to the programs on Africa Media and have a beautiful weekend.